The shattering has begun. Will our heroes claim gold and glory, or will they sink beneath the cold waters of the shattering sea? Find out this week on D and D Minus. Everybody, roll initiative for me. Yay. Can I keep yeah. my original one? Because I had a good one. Originally. I rolled a three. Don't know what you're talking about. Everyone. Oh, I rolled a better one. I'm good. I rolled an 18. I rolled an eight. eight. I rolled a 15. Eight. Wonderful. So the shattering has begun. So, so here's how the rules of the shattering are going to work for our purposes. Uh, whenever you get hit, you will roll a dexterity check. The dexterity check starts at a 10. And if you pass, you do not slip from the ice. Three slips from the ice and you fall off harmlessly into the water. You don't die, you don't drown, but you do fall off into the water. Each round, the dexterity check goes up. Last person standing wins. Any you questions mean, about any of this? You mean we have, to, we have to roll 10 or better to not fall at first, and then we have to roll 15 or better not to fall? Exactly. Okay. Does that change if we make it onto somebody else's ice block? Uh, no, this is about pushed, getting pushed and pushing. And the thing goes up because the two blocks of ice will smash together. So um, you have fallen onto blocks of ice. I assume that the four of you are standing relatively close to each other. Sure. Claude, you should do a backflip to just uh, intimidate <laughs> everybody. So everyone do a dexterity check just to make sure that you don't slip in your first landing. Oi. Ha-ha. 14. 19. Eight, but I have a plus two dexterity. Okay. Claw? 15. All right. So no slips for anybody at this I point. I am going to start rolling real low soon. Oh, no. <laughs> so first up is Snedrick. You sort of look around. You see an ice dwarf is relatively close to you. A Duragar. I'm sure there's a... I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. But a Duragar um, is relatively close to you. Uh, there's a kobold that you saw earlier. Uh, there's one of the guards from the temple. Not the one you spoke to, but one of the guards. There's a dwarf that's uh, sort of dressed in tribal gear. He's got like a long, long, very thin, very sharp looking spear. And then there are a couple of guys that look like pirates. And one dwarf that is wearing the blue robes, but he's wearing these like weird male hand things. Um, he's wearing these gauntlets and he seems to be planning to use those as his weapon. So they're all about the same distance on the various ice blocks, but the only people that are directly next to you are Kla and Bridget and Dave. All right. So I'm not within range of anybody to like to touch, to use my shocking grasp on. No, you could run over to someone. You could try and jump onto another ice flow and touch them and, and give them a zap. But no one is currently next to you except for your own team. All right, hold on. Let me... Then again, knowing this group, you might want to reach over and right, shock and right. grasp your own team members. I was actually going to ask if we can chain <laughs> shocking grasp. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, I was, just check I was just looking at all my little spells here. Get some shit involved. <laughs> I'm going to use my Ray of Frost spell on the um, w w somebody who's standing close to the water, right? Sure. Just trying um, to, like, so let's say the closest down. to you are the Ice Dwarf and the Kobold. Let's do the Kobold. He Definitely. seems like a badass. Definitely All don't righty. hit the Ice Dwarf. The Ice Dwarf ice. would be fine with the ice, exactly. Why don't you read to us what Ray of Frost does? A uh, frigid beam of blue-white light streaks across the creature, uh, towards the creature within range. Uh, make a ranged spell attack against the target. On a hit, it takes one D8. Well, fuck, that doesn't help. Well, I, but could it create a pathway as well? Like, if you miss or, like, hit, could it create a pathway as well? What do you mean? Like, would it be easier for us to get over to somebody else's ice block if you do the Ray of Frost thing and it, like... It just says I get a blue-white streak, uh, light that streaks towards them, not like a block okay, of ice. Okay, it's not or... ice. It's not it's, ice. It's... it's not a Silver Surfer situation. Yeah, right. Gotcha. No, that's what I was thinking. I wanted to hit I wanted to hit him with something that would, like, hit him, you know, that would that would mm -hmm. do, like, a force damage type thing. 
Okay. All right. Yeah, like I said, I thought I had something here that would like, you know, uh knock him away or whatever. So yeah, I'll do I'll use my ray of frost though. Mm-hmm. All right, great. Roll a D20 for me. Nine. Nine. That does not hit. So you little blue light streaks out past the kobold. He, he turns to you. Okay. I'm pretty sure that was rude. <laughs> All right. Next up is the ice dwarf. He noticed you cast a spell and he is going to run over and take a swing at Snedrick. <laughs> Sorry. I'll stick. <laughs> I, I was drinking, but I, I enjoyed the cobalt taunty noise very much. Thank you. Thank you. Just like that on record. So he has uh, <laughs> he has a, a war pick, which kind of looked like a miner's pick, except one end of it has been chopped off. Uh, he gets to uh, about half the distance between you and him, and then he smiles and disappears. The bitch has blink. Excuse me? What's blink? What, what is that? It's like... When you go into a different dimension, but only for like like a like turn. Scorpion from Mortal Co- from Fantasy Mortal Kombat. So you guys are discussing the spell Blink when Snedrick, you hear, but do not see the ice pick whew, zing next to your hair, next to your ear, and it gets tunk. You can see the divot as it gets stuck in the ice, like right next to your face. And Ooh. that is the the uh, ice dwarf's turn because doesn't matter if you're invisible if you roll like shit. <laughs> this is important to remember, kids. Doesn't matter if you're invisible if you roll like shit. So, uh, clock, <laughs> it is your turn next. Okay. Apparently, you can just run over to people and do shit too, so you don't have to do something that's distance. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How how like how far is each bird from each other? There's probably five or ten feet between them, so you will have to jump. You assume that the ice dwarf who jumped over and attacked Snedrick while invisible probably jumped, but you'd have to do a relatively easy jump to get onto either of the other team's icebergs at this point. And and you wouldn't be able to jump back after attacking? Um, No, you can't run, attack, and then run back. Okay, cool. Uh, I use You can, my... but you'll get an attack of opportunity because you're trying to disengage from someone. Right. Okay, uh, I use my dart weapon. Now, what other enemies are there? There's the kobold, there's the two brothers, and then is it the rest just a bunch of dwarves? There's the ice dwarf you can't see. There's what appears to be one of the guards. There's the tribal warrior. There's the bandit. And then there's the guy with the blue in the blue robes with the... Uh, gauntlets and actually he has now stepped aside and you see a very fancy looking dwarf who you recognize as Dang has been sort of hiding behind him. Yeah, I throw my dart at Dang. All right. Uh what's the range on that? It is 20. It says 20 and then in parentheses 60. Yeah, you could probably you could probably throw that dart at Dang. Okay. Yeah, throw that dart. Uh, 10. 10. That is not going to do it. Um, He's wearing sort of a fancy breastplate, and it tings off him, and he goes, Oh, Bridget, have you brought a dart game with you? You're going to need a little bit better than that if you want to win the shattering, Fidget. Ha, <laughs> Fidget. The lizard gets it. Goes you Fidget. Um, Kind of rhymes with so your Claw, name. So, Claw, you throw bounces off of uh, Dang, and then uh, you hear... Uh, the the <laughs> kobold is running at you, Snedrick. Now, he is on a different ice block, so he needs to... Can we all just acknowledge that he sounds adorable? <laughs> so we should just, you know, not worry about him as much, based on audio we, we should take him into our party under our... Perhaps. He <laughs> needs to roll to... Uh, and he is going to try and stab you with a dagger. And he rolls an adorable dagger stab. I'm going to do a (laughs) backflip. He crits. He jumps from on high. (laughs) And um, so he does 10 
points of damage to you, Snedrick. Ouch. Don't don't do the the don't do the kobold unless that was Dave doing I was a mean impersonation. Him. So you do a mean imp- so then do it as Dave. Do Dave doing a mean impersonation? I was doing Dave doing a mean impersonation. I don't feel like Dave does voices that way. Yeah, Dave does Dave amazing does voices. voices. Dave's a fantastic impressionist. He did a British accent <laughs> on a, his podcast the other day. You don't know. All right. Dave has a podcast? It's a fantasy podcast. Um, Dave has a podcast. Dave has a pan- fantasy podcast. What's the podcast about? I I reject this. As, <laughs> as, as, as Dungeon Master, nobody in this podcast can have a podcast. Um, Dave and, has a podcast. Uh, make a dexterity saving throw for me, Snedrick. 12. Nice. So he hits you and he hits you hard, sort of digs this dagger into your back, but you stay up even though it really, really fucking hurts. Next up is the dwarf that's dressed like a guard. He has a hammer. He's going to run and jump over to the opposite team and he's going to swing and he is going to miss. So he, the guard uses his turn to jump and attack another person, but fails. And Bridget, it is your turn. Okay. Um, I am going to channel divinity. Um, and I'm just going to take that action. And for my movement, I want to go the closest to... Are there any enemies near me currently? Yeah, so you have a feeling that the ice dwarf is still around, okay. even though they are invisible. And the kobold is... <laughs> Holding a dagger, which is plunged into Snedrick's back. Excellent. Um, and then you can jump across the ice and get to pretty much anybody. You would just have to make an athletics check to jump over to either of the other two icebergs and attack the people there. Hmm. I think I will stay where I am. Does anybody Has anybody lost any damage at this point? Yeah, I'm pretty much dead. Oh, really? Okay, one second. I'm, f- I'm full. <laughs> Good to know. Um, I'm going to use my bonus action to cast Healing Word to Snedrick. I'm going to do uh, Healing Word to Snedrick. So that, that's a total of seven? That's a total of seven. All right. I'm back up to nine. Thank you. All right. You are welcome. Thanks there, Bridget. I'll give you an invisible pickaxe later if I don't die. You got it. All right. It. That is Bridget's turn. <laughs> now the tribal dwarf uh he sees that going on realizes that you have magic and sort of lets out a streak like a and he throws his incredibly sharp spear at you oh you son of a bitch these guys make dumb noises stupid you sound like that 15 that does not hit does not hit so he throws the spear past you and then he goes oh that was his favorite spear (laughs) Next up, one of the pirates is going to try and jump onto your uh, little ice thing here because he heard Dave and he tries to jump on a critical fail and he jumps. He makes, he says, no one talks about our noises like that. And he jumps beautifully, (laughs) soars, soars through the air. And just as he soars through the air, the two icebergs clang together, leaving a space in the middle, and he goes <laughs> right into the water, disappears <laughs> under the water. So that's first opponent taken out. By the ice. <laughs> yeah. Nobody talks about our noises like that. See? Taunting was helpful. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> now the dwarf in the blue robes with the gauntlets, he is going to jump over because he also didn't like your comment about the noises they made. I just want everybody to know I'm getting those blue robes. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, He makes it, and he is going to take a swing at you, Claw. Yeah, he is. Claw is going to slowly undress everybody on this thing. (laughs) Uh Yeah, he is going to roll a six. That's not going to do it. Nope. Yeah, so he tries to (laughs) hit you with a gauntlet, and it just does not work out. Yeah. Now, Dang is going to jump over. Uh, you guys are on the largest iceberg, by the way, which is why everyone's jumping over to you by far. Um, he's going to jump over. Yep. And he it has a rapier, which mm. he is going to slash at Bridget with. Oh, good. 19? That hits, but uh, I will be giving him Wrath of the Storm. That is seven damage. All right. 
and then hit me with that Wrath of the Storm. He actually has to win a deck saving throw. What does he have to roll? Um, he has to roll a 13 or higher. All right. Rolls a 16. Oh, so he fuck me. slashes at you. Oh, fidget! Did I sting you? Your eyes go bright blue and you just shoot this electricity out of you towards him, but he ducks under it and goes, oh, is Fidget mad? And now, <laughs> Dave, it is your turn. I am going to cast uh, Command on I like that. Dang. Uh, why don't you read command so everybody knows what that is? You speak a one-word command to a creature you can see within range. The target must succeed in a wisdom saving throw or follow the command. Wonderful. He, what does he have to roll? He has to succeed on a wisdom saving throw. Okay. He pauses for a second and then he just sort of like shakes his head and um, the command spell does not work. So that is one. I would like to use a bonus action. Do you have a bonus action? I heard that you they were that was a thing. You used one earlier. <laughs> Do you have a bonus action? Yep. <laughs> Look under your bonus actions. I th I believe you, Heath. I have bonus action. You do have a bonus action, actually. What is this bonus action? Has. I have no idea what that means, but I do have one, apparently, just now. Oh, magic stone. It's a cantrip. I'm using it. You can imbue a stone that you are holding. <laughs> three different stones. I can do That's as right. many as three. You can imbue three stones you're holding with magic. I pick up three ice balls and imbue them with magic. Nice. And you can't throw them this. You I, can't throw them this. You can imbue they them. They are imbued with such magic that they go and. Are you hit starting a three. snowball fight? This is fucking awesome. I'm starting an ice ball yeah. fight. <laughs> You're about to start an ice ball fight, but you haven't thrown them yet. All right. That is Dave's turn. Everybody make a dexterity saving throw for me of 15. 11. I got a four. I got an unnatural 20. What? I got a dirty 20. 13. I don't understand. The, the die is dirty? No, I got a 19, but I have plus one dexterity, so it's dirty 20. I get it. I get it. All right, so everyone but Bridget, you have one slip. Two more slips, and you fall. No, I, I 13 plus three, right? Oh, plus three. That's 16. Yeah. So uh, Bridget and Claw, you do not have slips. Everyone else, you have one slip. Snedrick, it is back to you. You have a kobold who has dug a dagger into your back. There's an invisible ice dwarf probably somewhere on the ice next to you. There's a gauntlet guy trying to punch Claw. Dang has just slashed Bridget. And the used-to-be spear-wielding tribal dwarf is sort of standing dejectedly on his own ice. <laughs> All right, I'm going to use my shocking grasp on him. Ooh, good thing. Re tell us what happens. Uh, lightning that. springs from your hands to deliver a shock to a creature you try to touch. Make a melee spell attack against the target. Uh, you have advantage on the attack. Roll if the target is wearing armor made of metal. On a hit, the target takes 1d8 lightning damage, and it can't take reactions until the start of its next turn. Roll that sweet, sweet dice for me. 7, so 12. 12. That is exactly going to do it. Roll a d8 for me. All right, I got a 6. You got a 6. So you, he stabs you. Oh! You turn around and electricity starts to crackle <laughs> at your hands. And he goes, <laughs> and then poof, he just, all of his hair poofs out from the, <laughs> and he slumps to the ground unconscious and then gently slips off the ice. Yeah. That is the does. most adorable little thing I've ever seen. I think seen. I agree with Heath and we should make him a pet. Well, he's underwater right now. <laughs> So let's hope, let's hope. I dive after yeah, him. Yeah, stabbed me in the back with a knife, y'all. That's awful nice of you that you are uh, such also, a big Also, I mean, he's a he, he's a person too. Yeah. All right, now it is Ice Dwarf's turn, and it reappears right next to Snedrick, and it obviously looks more than a little perturbed by what it just saw. So it turns instead. And is going to take a swing with its war pick at Dave. That is a 24. He's going to roll. He's going to do eight damage to you. So he rolled pretty low on damage. So Dave, you take eight damage. He, he gets you right in the sort of shoulder. And it's like, oh, yeah. And gets you right in the shoulder with his little ice pick there. Next up is Claw. Okay. I try to steal the blue robes. <laughs> you want to steal the blue robes? Off of 
the... Don't worry, I have a plan. So I'm going to fudge this. This is a grapple? Let's call it a grapple. <laughs> uh, and then you're going to do... Real stealth-like. Uh, yeah. This Give is me your grapple. fucking cloak! Uh, <laughs> this is a stealthy grapple? A stealthy, is that yeah. what we're saying? Come on, man. He's trying to steal robes. You think that's in the fucking Dungeon well, Master sandbox? Well, but th uh, the reason I asked that is... Uh, <laughs> My stealth modifier is my Actually, higher. Eli, I would, I'm would. i surprised that the Dungeon Master handbook does not tell you what to do if the player starts trying to strip their opponent naked in <laughs> mid-fight. I'm surprised they've left that out. That seems like an oversight on their part. If Gary Gygax had foreseen us all playing this game, he would have <laughs> shot himself in the head with a t-shirt <laughs> instead, is what he would have done. Um, okay, so you're making a grapple check. You are going to roll a strength check against him to try to steal the robes off of him. <laughs> okay, I rolled a 15. You know how none of us are wearing robes and we're not cold at all? I got a plan. <laughs> He's got a plan. <laughs> you rolled a 15? Yeah. He rolled a 12. You can tell us plans. <laughs> tell us your fucking you, plan. There's no time. There's, there's multiple. You, there's an outside of the game universe. You can there's just no speak. Time. Speaking is a free action. <laughs> Especially outside yeah. of the game. Here we go. What but happened? That's it's neither here nor there. Claw, you whip these robes off of him, and he is now just standing there with his gauntlets and his like other normal clothes underneath. He was not naked underneath those robes, okay. but he is just standing there. So yeah. I whip the robe around myself, I make a loud kind noise directly at him, and I move to the free boulder or the free iceberg. Okay, if you try to move away from him, he will get an attack of opportunity. That's fine. Okay, he's going to get an attack of Jesus. opportunity on you. Um, that is this makes no fucking an 11. Sense. So I just want to be clear, an, a naked dwarf with just gloves or he has a little bit of clothes? In my head, he's naked too. But Yeah, he's, he's wearing normal he clothes. Like, so a, it's like a dwarf in underwear and gloves is attacking a bird. <laughs> A bird in blue robes. Yeah, a chili dwarf <laughs> is attacking a bird in blue robes. Well, did you put the robes on? I feel like you just have them in your hand. That's two I different actions. Around. I made a kind noise directly at him, and I jumped to the free iceberg. Yeah, and he rolled an 11. Did he hit you? Is that armor class? Yes. No, 13 is my armor nope, class. No, he is too <laughs> surprised. So you <laughs> put on his robes and then jump away from the party. And I'm on the, and I'm on the empty iceberg now, right? Alone. You are on the empty iceberg Alone. by yourself. Got it. Hey everybody, just stopping in for a second to thank you for listening to the show. This is the first publicly available episode of D&D Minus. We are so, so happy to be making this thing. It is a ton, ton, ton of fun to do, and we're so grateful at the wonderful support we've seen from folks just from these first five or six episodes. Speaking of which, if you do want to support the show, why not sign up to be a patron over at patreon.com forward slash D and D minus. Uh, you get access to a behind-the-scenes Q&A about what it's like to be in Dungeon Master and my history with D&D. &D. Plus, as of a couple days ago, you get access to our first ever one-off short game, The Worst and the Dimmest. It is our playthrough of Lasers and Feelings, and it is truly fantastic. But don't take my word for it. We prepared a little bit of a teaser to convince you to sign up. Stardate 3031. The Federation has brought peace to the galaxy. The war, starvation, and strife of ancient times has been replaced with a never-ending thirst for knowledge and cultural exchange. The best and the brightest of Starfleet explore the universe with no need for money or power. They crave only to spread peace and to explore our infinite universe. However, the heroes of our story are not the best of Starfleet. They are the worst. This pheromone solution is the most realistic thing I'm about to list, so... Excuse me, have you ever howled at the moon from the top of a blockbuster? I didn't think so. The flesh stick! He didn't create that. I don't know what he told you about that. I'm going to roll to see if this is an animal that I have killed under the knife. Hey, bud, just a heads up. I'm going to try to fuck this thing in a second, so, you know, keep that in mind when you attack. The worst and the dimmest. Listen to the full episode now at patreon.com forward slash d minus.
All right. Well, if that doesn't convince you, nothing will. If you haven't told friends about the show yet, please tell your friends, tweet about the show, Facebook about the show, all that kind of stuff, especially early on uh, when we're just starting the show like this. The more people that reach out and say stuff, the better. Uh, so thank you for all the support you've done so far. And now, back to the show. All right, so it is the guard's turn. He turns. He has been watching you rip this robe off somewhere, and he goes, I mean, this is the weirdest <laughs> shattering ever. Can I just say, this is the weirdest shattering ever? And he is hes going to jump over to the ice with claw, and he is going to try and hit you with his warhammer. That's a nine, so he misses. So he smashes his hammer down into the ice next to you. Next up is Bridget. Okie dokie. I'm going to take my war hammer. Question. And I am going to... Sorry, I hate yes. to interrupt you. Do you want to steal anyone's clothes and then <laughs> run away? Just because I want to get ready as the dungeon master. No. <laughs> sure don't. Sure okay. don't. Well, if we each steal one article of clothing from the dwarf, he'll freeze to death eventually. <laughs> See? Outside the box thinking. I'm going to take my war hammer. And I'm going to thunk it across uh Claw's head. <laughs> no, not you. Dang. Uh across Gangbang Dang's head. That is 13. Does not hit. You throw God smash her and it hits his chest plate again and he goes, Oh, Fear Jet, are you playing music like mommy and daddy do? All right, and I'm gonna use my bonus action. This is the second spell of the day. To heal, who's who needs healing? Dave. I could use some. I I took eight. I would keep it. You'd keep. I keep um, it. Uh, yeah. I, I would heal me, and Claw can go fuck himself. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dave. How many hit I points you have? I lost eight just now. I don't know. I'm down eight from uh, seventeen. So you could survive another one. Cool. So you're 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 you've got nine Correct. hit points. That's how many I have. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna wait and not do this. Okay. This time. So no bonus action for you. Um, unless, one second, just making sure. Cool, no, I just got stabbed with an ice pick. That's fine, you know, <laughs> save your bonus action. That's more important. <laughs> she only has a limited number of cure spells. She does. She I do. All right, the tribal warrior is next. He doesn't have his spear, um, and he doesn't have any other weapons, so he decides to jump over to the ice, and he's just going to try and shove Dang. So let's see how he rolls. So he goes to jump and then he sort of sees that it's a little bit farther and he just sort of like, oh, 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 and that's his turn. Just sort of chilling. Next up is the guy whose robes Claw just stole. As a surprise to no one, he is going to go after Claw and he makes it across the ice. And he is going to roll attack against you. That is a... I'm uh, just going to try and punch you with the gauntlet again. That is a 13. Uh, I have a 13. Does that hit? That does hit. He is going to do six damage to you. And that is his turn. Uh, all right. Dang again is facing off with Bridget. He is going to try and hit you with his... Rapier again. That cool. is an 18. That he hits. does nine points of damage to you. Jesus. Roll a All dexterity right. saving throw for me. Okay. Sure. That is a nine. All right. You have one slip. Ooh. Okay. And then he needs to make a dexterity saving throw, right? Mm-hmm. He rolls a nine? Nope. He is going to take... 16 lightning damage. Wow. Really? Yep. Yeah. So 2d8, and I have Channel Divinity Destruction. He wrath. slashes you again. He says, Ha ha, Fidget. It looks like you haven't learned anything after. <laughs> and the lightning just travels up your hammer through his rapier, and he just like a little miniature rocket goes sailing into the air <laughs> followed only by the stream of urine as he falls into the water next to your ice flow. Ah, uh, good times. Good times. I believe because I felt weak. <laughs> <laughs> Bead. 
I needed control over my situation. And your bladder. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So he's done. Dave, you are up next. Nice. Okay. Um, I'm going to jump onto the, the ice flow with Claw. He's by himself over there. There's two enemies. Yeah. Uh, the guard is there and the... Um, formerly Blue Robes guy is there. Oh, okay. Yeah, and the formerly Blue Robes guy is but there. But the So then the original Ice Flow on the other side is open. Uh, no, that's where the, the tribesman is there. Just a tribesman. By him smell. Uh, just a, a reminder that you are engaged with the um, ice, uh, the guy who just hit you with the ice pick. So if you do not attack him or take a disengage action, he will get an attack of opportunity on you. Noted. All right, I'm gonna stab that guy with my sickle. Yeah, I have a sickle. sickle? Wonderful. Roll a d20 oh. for me. Yeah. Plus four. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's plus four. That's a 14. Does not hit. You swing your sickle with all your farmhand might, and he ducks under it and goes, <laughs> and that is your action. I would like to use a bonus action. <laughs> do you, do you, what would you like to do? I have my magic stones floating around me also. Uh, no, they're just in your hand. And I around. hit him in the face with them. <laughs> you can't do that. That's an action. That's a that's my bonus action. Imbuing them with magic is your bonus action. Throwing them or doing damage with them is not. You could make more magic I'm gonna make. <laughs> I'm going to make three more magic snowballs. I actually think you can only do that once. It's a cantrip. I can do it again. I I don't think so. I that think is how cantrips well work, up. actually. In your face. Yeah. I love that we test no, the limits of Eli's DM that. knowledge. <laughs> okay, so if you cast this spell again, the spell ends early on any, any pebbles still affected by it. So you can make three more snowballs, but the three snowballs that you made are no longer, <laughs> are no longer magic. I make magical. three bigger snowballs. All right, great. Bigger, like, really bigger. big. Like, really big. Real big snowballs. He's got building three a really snowman. Ice, large, like, yeah, like big snowman size ice balls. Three of them now to replace the small ones. All right. Uh, everybody, it is the end of the round. The icebergs once again crash against each other. Make a dexterity saving throw for me. Uh, you can add your dexterity modifier. Uh, 15. 49. 15? It's 20 we need uh, this time, You need right? an 18 this time. Jesus. So yeah. nobody got that. Nobody got that 18? I did not. I would I right. did not like to for, use my charisma for this. So one. everyone has two slips, except for Claw, who has one. All right. And Snedrick, it is your turn. All right. So I'm going to use my catapult spell. I'm going to grab a five pound chunk of ice off of the iceberg and throw it at his head. All right. Use, you can Whoa. use one of my giant magic ice balls if you want. Yeah, but yours aren't going to be as they, strong as they, like the they do. Pounds. Like extra not, special damage, I think, based on the spell. They do. Oh, yeah. do they? Okay, then I'm going to do Wait, that. I'm save gonna... two of them. Uh, yeah, yeah, just well, use, one. use one. one. Yeah. Also, he can make more every turn. No, I want to use two of them on my next turn. This is a dexterity uh, nice. saving throw of thirteen. Thirteen. He's going to hit. He'll hit twenty. That's a nine, my dude. So you're going to roll. 3d8. 3D8. Yeah! And, oh. and then I gotta figure out how much extra damage you do because of the fucking magic stones. <laughs> it sounds like he dies. <laughs> Alright, so it was 10 all together with my 3d8. 10 all together plus Dave, roll 1d6 plus your spellcasting ability exactly. modifier. I don't roll it, you, he you, rolls it because it's oh, he, yeah, yeah, he used yeah. it. So roll a d6 plus, um, plus 3. So it'll be 17, 17 all together. 17 all together. He is Jesus. not looking good. Uh, but he's not down yet. He's still standing. Which guy was this? That's the ice dwarf. He's on Feels the, like he's dead. He's on our original flow. Our original he is iceberg. on your original yeah. flow. He okay. is going to roll. I will tell you, he has two slips. So if he does not make this 18, he... Oh! So he... So he sort of stay, he he takes this magic snowball and and makes his way to his feet and goes upon the words of Rathmore, I swore on my father's whoop and falls off the glacier. Die! <laughs> what was that? You trailed off. What were you gonna say? Oh, my, my father's what? 
Uh, All right. <laughs> Claw. <laughs> All right. I got two bad guys and, and uh, Bridget's got one. How many you got? So oh, far, I got Claw? one. You got... Who do I got? You lightning the shit out of day. Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. All right. Claw, uh, yeah, you're up next. I'm going to attack the gauntlet guy. It would have been hilarious if you had taken the guard's coat. <laughs> I mean, I take the guard! I, I thought about taking the gauntlet, but... <laughs> then I then think... he just starts introducing himself to everybody. <laughs> Hello, I am a guard gauntlet man. Just visiting from out of town. But I think I'll just try and take one of them out. All right, do it. What, nice. Uh, you using um, flurry of blows or just... Regular? I'm going to, but can I use any of my weapons on the attack beforehand? Because flurry of blows comes after the attack action. Yeah, so Flurry of Blows is after you take the attack action on your turn, you can spend one key point to make two unarmed strikes as a bonus action. Yes. Yes, you can. So, so I can use... you get three... Yeah, and I can use any weapon? Uh, and you can use any of your weapons, yes. Okay, I'll use my quarterstaff then. Wonderful. Hit. Roll that. Um, 11. Do I add anything yeah, to Yeah, plus five. Okay, so 16. That'll hit. Okay. Roll damage. Uh... D6, four, plus three. Seven. And so now I'm doing unarmed strikes? Uh, yep. Okay, so that'd be two of those. Roll a D, roll 2d20 for me. Oh, I rolled a nine and a two. Uh, the nine will hit. Okay. So roll a d4. Okay. Two. Just does it. You hit him with the staff and then... Kung Fu style leaping kick. He's sort of woozy. You can tell from the stick and you, ah! and you kick this half naked dwarf whose robes you stole <laughs> off the ice. And he goes, we're shattering ever. <laughs> As he goes into the ice, I wink at him over the, the hem of my robe. Saucy, Second worst yeah. shattering ever. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It is the guard. He has just watched you steal someone's robe. <laughs> <laughs> kick them off the ice and then wink that at them. That was a while ago. Yeah. Uh, and he is going to attack you, Claw. 22? Yeah. yeah. Okay. He does seven damage. Ooh, okay. You are down to four hit points, my friend. Uh, roll a dexterity saving throw for me. Uh, so a 20? Uh, yeah. Okay. 19! Oh, plus three. So yeah, he, he, he punches, he gets you with his hammer, but you stay on your feet. Cool. All right. Bridget, it is your turn. I'm going to use my bonus action first to heal Claw. Okay. You're going to cast... I'm going to ha- cast Healing Word. Okay. Because I don't need to, like, touch him, and he's on a different iceberg. Sure. Um, That is going to be a five. Heal yourself for five. Okay. And I'm going to attack the the lone lone gunman. Um, you have a crossbow. I know. I'm debating whether I want to do the crossbow. Yeah, I'm going to do the crossbow. All right. <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna attack him with my crossbow. Is there anything that can fortify our slips or no? Um, what? You can make an athletics check or a strength check or something if you want to try and like undo a slip by getting closer to the thing. I'll, I'll let you roll for it. What about acrobatics? Uh, not acrobatics, unless you can tell me an acrobatic way that you would get closer to the center of this backflip area. Yeah, backflip. <laughs> I feel like a backflip would not make you more secure. <laughs> uh, Bridget, what are you doing with your action? All right, I am gonna crossbow bolt him. Who? Uh, the the lone the lone dude, the tribal the dude. The tribal dude, not the guard. Not the guard. Okay. Uh, um, roll it. That would be yeah. Um, that is a 17. 17. I think that hits. That All does right. hit. Yes. Roll damage. Okay. That is nine points of damage. Nine points of damage. He does not look good. He's like, oh, and a, a crossbow bolt sticks in his center and he looks at you and is just like, oh, oh, oh. And he sort of gestures at it. Oh, 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 oh. All right. And it's his turn. <laughs> Uh, he has no weapon. He's going to pull that bolt out of his chest oh, that's and good. throw it at you. Bleed out. Oh, he's a monk. Yeah. Balls. Okay. 
God, I hope he doesn't That's get me. That's a 12. That does not hit. <laughs> he just weakly pulls it out. Woo! Woo! Oh, poor boy. And then he flips you off. I guess All he, right. oh, nice, nice, <laughs> nice. Sportsman like. Right. Um, Dave? Does, okay. It is your turn. I'm up. You didn't fall off the yeah. ice. That's nope. good. Excellent. I would like to use my breath weapon of fire on whichever. There's two people, bad guys left. There are two bad guys left. Which uh, one's on our flow? There's the one on the neither, neither one on your flow. Okay. Well, I've got 15 feet of range, which fits gets gets us to either. You could, flow you could to move over side of to us. either of them and absolutely do it. Yeah. All right, I'm going to stay where I am and shoot him from. You can only shoot the, one, and you do feet. have to move to at least the edge of your ice flow to do it. It won't give you a Unless slip you or do anything bad. Spell. Um, you don't have to like jump over or hit an athletics check, but you can't like get them both at the same time because it's a 15 foot cone and they're on two separate ice flows. The one Anna hits almost dead. It seems like. All right. Well, then I'm going to I'm I'm going to use the Eldritch Blast then instead. Okay. Nice. On the one that's not as not almost dead, the one that's got a little the bit guard. more life left. Yeah. All right. Do it. Roll that d twenty. Game on. All right. I got a I got a sixteen. You rolled a sixteen. I rolled a sixteen. I don't know if I get a plus. Yeah. There's plus five to that for your eldritch blast. So you yeah you roll it roll a d ten for me just to make sure no you literally can't not knock out this tribesman so you you turn and you go what do you do you say sweet shit uh i say eldritch blast all right you say eldritch blast and i say sweet shit and the the tribesman looks at you and goes oh, 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 and then just a green specter of light comes blasting out of your hand and knocks him off the ice and he goes oh, 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 and in the subtitles under the screen it says we're shattering ever Eldritch Blast, sweet shit. <laughs> All right. Everybody make a dexterity saving throw. Big money. 13. 17. Uh, 15. Uh, did you add seven, your... 7. 17, which would be 19. I would like not. to take the action where I roll for not having as many slips. Uh, it's too late. You've already done your Eldritch I Blast said on it, your action. I said it before the thing. You did not. All right. <laughs> I said it fast. So, just now, fast. So, Dave... Bridget and Snedrick, the three of you, with one enemy left, go slipping off the iceberg, land into the water. You feel a spell sort of catch you so that you don't drown or get otherwise hurt. You feel yourself embubbled by magic. But Claw, you are the only one left on the ice. It's just you and the guard. So Claw, it's your turn. Mano a birdo. <laughs> Hand to Bert. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have another complicated idea. You have to tell me if this is feasible or not. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. What I would like to do is wrap the blue robe around his okay. head so that he mm -hmm. is blind. Will that in any way make it more likely that he will fall off, even though he only has one slip? Uh, yeah, I will give him disadvantage on his next slip roll. Also, you're a bird. Can you just fly right I before fly. you're about to fly? I have a. F I, I I definitely can. Can't. Fly. Why can he not fly? Uh, because his wings were clipped. That's his whole origin Perfect. story. Thank you for paying attention this whole time, Dave. It definitely says flying speed fifty feet under my trace. Right, because I can't. I can't go into D and D Beyond and go. I wrote a backstory. Oh, <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah. I, okay. So. I'm going to go with this crazy plan because if I attack him, I don't have a chance. All right. Tell us your plan. What's your plan? Okay. I am going to wrap the blue robes. Oh, my God. Tightly don't. around Can his we head. just ignore? Oh, You're my not God. Gonna, <laughs> to blind You're him. not going to go and pick up the, the magic stones and throw them? No. I wrap no. the blue robes around his head. All right. That is and a. And I blind him. <laughs> that's, a, that's a grapple. So you're going to make and a strength. Well, no, you can't just do it. You got to do a yeah, no. strength contest with yep. him. That's a 20, right? Yeah, roll a d20. Now, wait a second, though. You're framing this as a I'm 
wrapping the wait. So I have decided that wrapping robes over yeah. someone, which yeah, I have yeah, had yeah. to use twice as opposed to the zero <laughs> times I thought I would, <laughs> is a strength contest, is a grapple. 14. 14. He rolls a 17. So you try to wrap the robes around Interesting. him. Interesting. And he yeah. just dodges and goes like, literally. Can I tell you, you've got a robe or... thing? You've got a robe <laughs> thing, bird. Now, before I do step of the wind, mm -hmm. uh, do I get, to, do I still have the robe? Yeah. You, you okay. tried to whip That's it around his head. That's just important to me. Yep. That's just important to me. You've got the robe. Uh, okay. So I'm going to cast step of the wind. Got it. And I'm going to dash to the iceberg that is furthest away. You're going to disengage, but that's fine. I hope this robe gets caught on in like a <laughs> sharp spot and knocks you off. Yep. I don't because I I would really like right. one of us to like get to now, meet Valkar. Roll a d20 to make it. For spite, I would like him to lose now. <laughs> now again, the robe thing. I want to try and like do an athletics check. I would call it an acrobatics check, but whatever. Uh, to try and make it impossible for me to slip on the next turn. Uh, you, you can't make it impossible, but I will take one of your... So roll a d20 to make it over to the other iceberg and then roll another d20 and I will take one of your slips away. Okay. Oof. Two and 18. Nope, not going to do it. Plus plus what your, what your dexterity is. Well, that's my question. Is it, Two can plus... I, so that's a two... Plus... Well, can it be an acrobatics? No, it's well, athletics. Do it, do it acrobatically. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Here's what happens. Because what my my plan is to like... He's going to backflip over to the other thing. Do gonna, it stealthily I'm, too. Why not? What the fuck? Add I'm, I'm going to jump more acrobatically adverbs. to the top of the other iceberg, so, grasping onto the very top so that it is impossible Here's what you're going to do. You first, yeah. the, the icebergs have drifted apart. So you do not... You choose not to jump over to the other iceberg. But since you rolled an 18 on your other check... I will let mm -hmm. you jump to the top of this iceberg, the one that the guard is on with you, and you now mm -hmm. only has one slip. Okay. All right. Uh, it is the guard's turn. He goes, I was really convoluted. The whole robes <laughs> thing. Uh, and he's going to use his action to climb up there with you. So he now has zero slips, and he is going to attack you. Why does he have zero <coughs> slips? Because he climbed up there with you. Because he just he did, did the same he, thing. He did the same he thing what he did. I did too? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Please tell me he strangles Morgan with the robe. <laughs> he rolls a 10, so I assume he misses you with the hammer? Yes. All right. So uh, you and him are both going to roll now. A uh, The <laughs> dexterity check now is a 20. You're bare the, the, this iceberg is the last one. The others have blown away in the water. Uh, Dave, Snedrick, Bridget, you've been fished out by clerics. Bridget's parents are fussing over you and using healing spells on you. Uh, Bridget's father is really trying to convince Dave to start a class action lawsuit with him against the shattering <laughs> as a general thing. But Claw and this guard are standing on this iceberg that is slowly splitting apart. There's barely three feet of ice left at this tiny little piece that you are at the top of and roll a dexterity saving throw for me. You need to hit a 22. He failed his. <laughs> uh, so he now has one slip again. You need to roll a 22 out of 20. You <laughs> fail. No, I need to roll a 19, but I rolled a 17. Uh, 17 plus three. Three is a 20. Ugh. Not not quite good enough. So you now have two slips and he has one slip. So we are back where we started. Can I give you some advice, Claw? No. Here we go. Please? <laughs> Please, dear God. Here we go. It's Claw's turn. Uh, okay. Make a toboggan out of the robe. <laughs> <laughs> and then just, that, that's it. Just play in the toboggan. I'm just going to attack him with my quarterstaff. Quarterstaff, nice, do it. But I'm telling you guys right now, it's going to be a loss. Are you going to fury, fury of blows after that? I can. I already used two. It already uh, used his two key points. Oh. Uh, roll that oh. d20. 11. Plus five. That'll hit. Roll a d6 plus three. Five. Uh, plus three is eight. Does he fall off the ice? He probably does not. One, seven, two, we'll find out. So he's at one now, and I'm at two. Right, but if he slips here, you guys would be tied. True. Ooh, what if you spin up the robe like a towel and snap him <laughs> with it a little bit? Uh, that's eight damage, Morgan. Yeah. I've literally never been happier to say this in my entire life. This guard has exactly eight hit points. 
Killed him. So you <laughs> strike him Yahtzee. with your stick. He goes, yeah, I got to say, this has really weirded me out and put me off the shattering and sort of slumps <laughs> over, rolls slowly as the last ice flow crashes into the rocks below, ridden by the one, the only, the champion of the shattering, Claw the Aracocra. Oh, and he dropped the robe into the water. <laughs> nope, still have it. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2019. All rights reserved.